I know you wish you had a mouse, I just didn't. Hi, uh, can you guys hear books? Can you guys hear me? Uh, Ganesan. Uh, oh yeah, forget about the uh, My name is Ganesan. I was born in Malaysia in in Taipei. Yes, yeah, somebody said that. Uh, I went to Japan after my SPM, after my O level. I never planned to return back until the earthquake. So, <laughs> guys, uh, I have been in Malaysia for the past few months. I, I started my first company in 2003, I exited in 2008 in Japan, a lot of fun things happened, I was bonded for a few years, I was working for some, uh, one of the most famous Japanese uh, web company over there, and then uh, it was like, I don't know, uh, I got bored with what I was doing, I, I just quit and I'm traveling around the world, right now I'm supposed to be still on vacation, but I don't know, I'm landed in, in this part of the world again. I stayed three months in Brazil. That picture just now uh, by RRI, I was there too at RubyConf in, in Brazil, it was like super awesome. We had like 700 people for the first time. Uh, right now I'm like uh, doing nothing. Actually, I just put that thing there because I got so many recruiting uh, offer for the past six months being just, you know, doing nothing. So I got bored with it. I just write I'm somewhere. So you guys can find me on uh, Facebook. Also, uh, I, I run a club called Startup Malaysia. Startup Malaysia Startup Club, and well, in Malaysia we only have about 100 people. The same club in Singapore, I started later after Malaysia, we have like 360 people, right? 330 people right now, and well, this was an event I held uh, just about five days ago. We have like 80 people, Google gave us use of office. I think it's one of the most awesome group right now, and it's fun. Right now what am I doing? I'm helping a company called Gumi. Um, I'm just helping, I'm not getting paid, I'm not given anything, I'm just helping them getting known from outside of Japan. They are the biggest uh, game publisher in, uh, in Japan for Greek platform. And they are one of the most profitable ones. Why I'm helping them? For some personal reason, because the CEO is so cool and, and you know, uh, and he's going to fund me my, my, my next uh, business. <laughs> Okay, uh, I fucked myself. That's the title. <laughs> oh, excuse me for the language. Uh, I don't really live here. I don't. I don't even you know speak English much. My lifetime. I've been living in Japan for like 18 years. I never even. I don't know. Like, so what I want to tell you guys. I mean, uh, I really fucked myself. I started out my first company when I was a student. I I was in during my first year of my PhD. I got so bored trying to explain about my next big thing to my professors, so I say, okay, what the hell, I just built a company and I just, you know, do whatever I want to do. So, why I did start, my first big reason was nobody wants, um, I was under Japanese government scholarship at that time, but, uh, you know, money is not enough, so I wanted to do something fun. I started building uh, the first search engine optimization software available in the year 2003, 2004. So, you just pick a keyword, you just put a URL, you get all the damn thing you have to do, and I get rid of the software two years later. So, well, why sucks? Why why entrepreneur sucks? I mean, I just put it there, and it's like, you have like 100 guys or girls on the, in the line trying to, you know, get you, get late to you or something like that. It's just that you know you, you can sleep or you can be with all these girls, but unfortunately, it's, it's not there. So, the passion is like, idea is just one girl. So, you have one girl that you can go home with, but you still have another 99 girls waiting for you. So, and we see it's like you're meeting a mother or a father, you know. Like you, you go and pitch, you go so passionate with them, but they don't really care about you. Like you, you go, man, I've pitched about 100 pieces from like 20 different countries, I think. Like, fuck, give me the money, man. <laughs> and trust me, what I found out is that nobody cares about your solution. <laughs> I told them I built a fucking awesome software. You, know, you just put a keyword in it and you get all the answers. And nobody really cared. Like, I got so bored. And then I found out that there's a, there is, the problem is the problem itself. You know, I'm, not, I'm pitching the solution. I put a keyword in the URL. That's the solution. I'm not pitching the problem. That's what I found out. I found out very, very late after that. The market size. I was building a software. The market was growing in Japan from 2003 to 2008. 
where everybody, uh, we have three publicly listed companies just by doing search engine optimization. It's crazy, you know, they're making millions and I was there providing software for them. They make money out of my software, but I was not making millions. I was, you know, somewhere else. And one more thing is the team, like, you know, what Paul said just now, and then the confidence level. When you pitch to someone, I get pitched uh, everywhere I go, and people pitch me about their product, their solutions. But the problem is, the confidence is not there. When I just throw one single question, I usually find out, yeah, we know the market. Don't be like that. Even though your market is small, if you have one to five paying customers, I'm very sure the UBCs will give you guys money. And, of course, the CEO. Well, the next thing is, uh, what I found out uh, after you know, running, uh, I built like three different companies, but two of them I just get rid of it. One, I break into two, I sell it to two publicly listed companies in Japan. It's not a big deal, but you know, it's normal. Uh, what we startups do is not we building the next cool thing. Tell this to the government, tell this to everyone. We are creating jobs. That's the most important thing that we are trying to do. It's, it's not that you're creating a software or something. We are creating jobs. People tend to forget about this. Like, you know, we, by, by creating a startup, like my first startup, I had like 30 people working for me, and by the time I reached 30, I was so stressed out. I was like, I have to manage this, I have to do this for this guy, and so many crazy things. And like what Mr. Son Masayoshi, one of the most famous Japanese entrepreneurs, he said, I don't care. If it's, the, the rules they cannot, I will bang the table, I will break the table, I will even put some oil on myself and burn myself to death in front of the government or whatever. Every time he faced into his problem, he just do a lot of crazy stuff. I know this from his brother. <laughs> Please don't on Facebook, you guys can hunt him down. So, well, about pitching, I, I, I just let, uh, I don't know if you guys read, it's like, there are so many types of investors. I, I keep on hearing that not much investors are there in the Malaysia. Come and pitch to me, I will bring money from Japan. That's what I'm trying to do. I know like so many investors trying to invest to this part of the world, but unfortunately, you know, like people are not willing to get the, the cool money out. And well, uh, well, make it simple. Make it sound like, okay, you are the like super smart guy, you know your thing, you know your stuff, because like, Investors, there are like four types of them. Uh, let me just go somewhere. Uh, like the big shot guy, you know, the rich kind of guy. I have a lot of uh, big deep pocket, especially those. Uh, I, I try to pitch to the government people. If you guys are linked to, I'm sorry, but I try to pitch to some government people. I feel that, damn, give me the money, man. It's blood money. <laughs> and the kind guy, you know, the kind guy should come in their portfolios, and they are like kind of easy to get. What I find in Malaysia, like I go around the world, uh, lately I've been to Brazil, US, Argentina, Chile, Japan, Singapore, and well, I feel that uh, most of us are clueless what will happen in 24 months. I, I hear there is a discussion going on. 24 months from now, we all are going to be rich. Trust me, start your company now, 24 years, uh, 24 months from now, you guys are going to be rich. Because people will be start hunting down companies from Malaysia. If you guys see Zalora is doing, they are doing a crazy good job, you know. That's what happened in Japan, what happened in Brazil. After they started up, 15, 16 months after that, people starting to just pour money into the business. They, they are clueless about what they are doing. They just pour and keep on pouring because they see Duffy in, uh, in Brazil was so successful. Uh, the same company under Rocket Internet, which is running and uh, selling just crazy shoes. And like, I have I have few more things to go with. Blood money versus no money. I would say don't take blood money. Government money, it's like, I don't know, it's like so hard to get, I heard. Some say it's so easy to get. It's up to you guys. But if you guys really are bleeding or something like that, come to me. <laughs> A few final slides. There are so many social game mobs right now. It's like in Japan, you build a, any damn social game you can. I'm not a game builder, so you just build something and you get you get into somewhere. I've seen so many publicly listed or going to get listed. Gumi is going to be one of them. So if you guys uh, want to build your next game, come and talk to me. That's one more thing. It's like, okay, let's uh, forget because I have so many things to talk to. Okay, startup in Japan was like, uh, we had the, I think it's the third wave, uh, ending of the third wave. The first wave will be like from 97 to 2000. Famous companies like Yahoo Japan came out where they just bought over the shares. Rakuten is there. The second wave, it's from 2003 to 2007. We have those social media games, uh, social media stuff not game yet. So from like 
you know, mixy green DNA, all those, uh, mixy might, you might not be familiar. The third wave is like from 2009 onwards, these are the social gaming companies. Gumi, 2009, January, only three of them. Now they are 200 person, and they are making 20 million USD per month. And one guy is creating 90% of their game. It's like, damn crazy, man. <laughs> and well, uh, about funding, okay, basically, don't get me wrong, I, when I meet a lot of entrepreneurs here, they say they want half a million or they want 50, uh, you know, 300,000 or 500,000. Basically, this is how it's working in Japan. Uh, they will go for like 100K to 150K, uh, the first round, which is like, if you see their cost value, it's like just getting about 30K to 50K RM. <coughs> and engineers there are expensive, you know, like Mr. Arai. Before I forget, Arai-san was awarded Genius Programmer of the Year 2003 by Japanese government. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Um, <laughs> <that's like laughs> so like, uh, know, what's most important true. with this uh, 50K or you know 100K, it's like, just build a product, show it to them that you are potential, you have the value to get invested more. What is missing about us here, it's like, we try to build super big, huge product where nobody cares about it. Remember, nobody cares about your solution. It's, it's, it's a tiny product, but make sure you get one or two paying customers. You just show them, okay, if I get one million from you, and I already have two paying customers, I just have to work harder to get another 100 paying customers, and my business is going to grow. You're not interested with me? Actually, that's how I secured my, my, my funding. Well, uh, I can talk more, but the second round will be like uh, from 30 million to 30 million yen, it's about well, 1 million RM to 1.5 million. They also take another 30%. So, uh, release whatever. When a person comes to you and says, okay, I want to give you money, take the money. <laughs> take the money, man. You can change your idea, you can pivot your idea, you can do whatever you want once you take the money. <laughs> Nobody cares. Once they pump in the money, and you say, ah, I think I have a better idea. <laughs> oh, yeah, I already pumped in the money. They will never say, give me back. Because there are s some reasons why they pump in money to you guys. It's like, it's not your idea, actually, which counts. It's, as I mentioned, it's the team and the market. The market. I meet a lot of entrepreneurs in Malaysia and they say, yeah, we are trying to go after the Malaysian market. Why? One of the reasons why I'm coming back, we can go after the world by being in Malaysia. We have no language barrier, we have so multinational people here. Why are we so, you know, we have no people say that, yeah, Malaysia is a small market, it's very difficult. No, who cares about Malaysia? Who cares about the small market? If you go after the world from Malaysia, the next big thing will come from Malaysia. And uh, well, I have one more thing there. But if you guys are interested, uh, I'm not going to talk about it, but uh, you just get to take a look at you know, uh, what Dave Merker in Brazil talk, to, taught me also. And this is the things that you have to talk to. Uh, you can find his slide on how to pitch to VC. It's, it's on somewhere. I mean, his slide's ugly, but he told me the reason is very simple. Once you see this slide, you will never forget. So that's the reason. <laughs> he is a I mean, super awesome guy. He's married to a Japanese woman, so it's very easy to meet him in Japan, actually. And well, that's, uh, that's more or less. Uh, let me just give, give me another two more minutes. Yeah, I can speak to you guys in Japanese if you want. Uh, this is what I'm, I'm doing uh, right now. It's like, oh, shit. Uh, don't worry about the company name. Uh, the, the pitch is very simple. How many of you guys are iOS developers here? Well, I've only one, two, three, four, uh, five. Okay, uh, what I'm doing right now is like very simple. Most of you guys can build your software. How many of you guys know how to market your iOS software? Or Android, or, or whatever software you guys build? You guys just put on the app store, I'm hoping that magic will happen, right? <laughs> hoping that it will be the next Angry Bird. <laughs> I spent three months sleeping in Brazil trying to think about 100 apps that I can build because I was so passionate about it and I just looked back and said, damn man, I can build all these apps. I just can't outsource it or I can even code it or whatever. But I can't market it. Then I said, okay, I'm a damn good SEO guy. Why didn't I just go after SEO on App Store? And I started pitching. I just flew back to Japan. Three days after that, I already got 
a certain amount of money. I'm not, I, I haven't signed the deal yet, so a certain amount of money. And then the value for the company, which I still haven't even registered, is just shoot up the next round. So I, I'm planning to pump in a huge amount of cash, including my own. And well, uh, the strategy is pretty simple. I'm going after the world. So, <laughs> this is the color. I'm going after 20 different languages, 50 different countries, plus English. So if any of you guys are interested on like uh, building the next multi-billion dollar company from Malaysia, come and talk to me. And uh, I'm crazy. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. Thank you.